Hey everyone, this is Corinne Lafon, your favorite radio host, your only radio host and favorite girl, of course, broadcasting to you from Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean on Between the Lines. I am always starting my show with gratitude and thankfulness, so I am so thankful to be here. I woke up this morning to a lot of rain. It's very overcast, but the sun is coming out. It's so amazing how life just shows you you know how things work out for you so when you think everything is gloom and doom and ooh, the sun comes out always it never fails the sun comes out and so i have somewhere to go this evening and i'm like mm, if the rain continues like this you know i may not be able to go but i know what normally happens the day just changes into something beautiful and you're like you can't believe this is what it was earlier today so I am not worried at all. I'm just leaving it to what it should be. I am just so thankful to be here, to experience it, to see it, to just witness and just breathe. Just breathe. Yeah. I have with me today a beautiful woman. She's just looking at you on the screen. <laughs> and I put her in a position to just show herself and watch my picture on the screen. She's can't, she can't see me live like I'm seeing her live. So I'm sure she's a bit uncomfortable with that, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Um, let me tell you a bit about Andrea Hall. That's who is looking at you there. Let me tell you a bit about Andrea Hall. And we're talking about living your joy. She knows a lot about that. And she's going to share that with us in the next few minutes. Yeah. So Andrea has worked as a high-powered criminal defense attorney. She doesn't look it right. She doesn't look fierce. So she has worked as a high-powered criminal defense attorney for over 13 years, specializing in sex offenses and domestic violence, of all things. After discovering a brain tumor, Andrea decided it was time to get off the hamster wheel and leave the criminal justice behind, criminal justice system behind. She always loved and was attracted to horses like I am. Hmm. Andrea has done numerous years of personal coaching with Personal Success Institute prior to getting certified. She was able to combine her love for horses, her ability to coach, and help others into a new career as a certified, is it equine? How do you pronounce that again? Yep, that's equine. Equine. Equine gestalt or gestalt as some people will say. So I have two words to pronounce differently. So a certified <laughs> equine or equine gestalt coach. Gestalt or gestalt means wholeness. And this is what Andrea and the herd bring to lawyers and couples. So that's her target audience. She became certified through Melissa Pierce's Touch by a Horse program in May 2016. She and her husband live in Eden, Colorado on 48 acres. My gosh, would she get lost there? Where she runs, <laughs> where, where she runs with us, whisper limited liability company. She has seven horses of her own. Isn't that amazing? She needs to go outside and show us those horses and uses them in her EGC work. Andrea works with lawyers who either need to find balance in their life or discover what makes their heart sing again. That's what we are all searching for. She also works with couples who are wanting to take their relationship to another level. If divorce is the answer, or that's what they believe, she and the horses help them heal the unfinished business. Wow, it's not amazing. A quote from Dr. Phil she loves is, you have to earn your way out of marriage before you can become whole. Hmm. Andrea does free initial cons consultations. You can check out Andrea's blogs, interviews, workshops, and retreats, and we're going to be showcasing her website in a bit, coming down to the end of the interview. She's the author of Sex and Justice, and she has two more books coming out. I don't know, is it still in the summer? We're going to find out more about that. When she's a contributing author, Living Your Joy, which is a topic of our discussion today, Creating a Joyful Life by Joyce Graham. Her story is called For the Love of Horses and Touched by a Horse Equine Coaching Stories Anthology. Welcome, Andrea, to Between the Lines. Thanks for having me. Yes. Andrea, you have to, since you're using your camera, I am going to tell you to go outside and show us um, sometime during the interview, if you can, seeing that you can walk around, if you don't mind, showing us those horses. I would love to see them. Would you mind doing that? I am actually not where my horses are at the moment. Um, we are in transition because of being built. And so 
um, we are in a location from our 48 acres. So oh. I'm not able to do them. <laughs> oh, so here's what. At another time, when you get settled and you're, you're back by your 48 acres, could you send us a video yeah. of your horses? Walk around, tell us about them. Um, what they yeah. do, what to do. I would love for you to send me that video and I can add it, you know, to, to the recording. Yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah, I would love that. That is more for me than for anybody else. I know. I love horses. I'm a Black Beauty fan. From a child growing up, I, there's something that connects me with horses. And I... Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember oh. asking my mother to get a horse. Now, I live in the Caribbean, so I don't have 48 acres, clearly. But, but my mother was like, where are you going to put it? And I was like, right in the yard, you know, there's some grass there. <laughs> yeah, that's every kid's solution. We'll just put it in the backyard, mom. Yeah, just put it <laughs> in the backyard. You know, I um, don't know anything about taking care of horses, but I came close to a few and I just love how magnificent they are. They're just so magnificent. Um, they are. Yes. So let's go back a bit, Andrea. You were a high-powered criminal defense attorney. Wow. Correct. Wow. And you left all of that because of a health issue, a brain tumor, that made you Correct. decide to make a switch. Now, that, that is a real wake-up call, Andrea. Yeah. Yesterday was four years uh, since I had uh, the emergency brain surgery and uh, it was real life-changing for me uh, when I found out I had the brain tumor I went into task mode and just was worried about everything that needed to be done and moving clients and making sure my business was in order however after all that was done I really decided that um, it was you know, an opportunity for me to do something different with my life if I got a second chance at that. So I did, and I became certified, and now I work with other individuals that, you know, are at the crossroads like I was. Do I stay or do I go? Why does it have to take something drastic for people to make a switch to realize that life needs to be lived and there's more to life than the hamster wheel? Well, I think for me, um, and, you know, I can only speak for me, but I think there's probably a lot of people that feel the same way that I did. And that was, you know, I spent uh, seven, eight years in school getting an education. You're tapped out with, you know, student loans, and this is all you ever thought you were going to do. And, you know, saying you're a lawyer has status to it. You know, it becomes your identity. Hmm. And for me to say that I was going to leave all that behind after I had worked so hard to achieve that was a little um, scary for one. Two, I had lots of family members and people that were going, really, you're going to leave all that? And I was like, yeah, well, it's not as lucrative and as luxurious as one would think. I can tell you there's a lot of other things that go on behind the scenes mm -hmm. um, that uh, are a lot more stressful. And so I just decided life is too short. Yet again, I think a lot of times people in our profession are uh, in this, I guess, backed up into a corner, if you will. Um, like I said, they have student loans, you know, they may be married, um, living in the house that they're, you know, over budget on driving cars that are more expensive than the average. Um, may have a wife that's a stay-at-home mom, you know, four kids in private school, you know, things of that nature. And so they're grinding it out every single day because that's the lifestyle they're accustomed to. And, you know, change is not always easy. And until a lot of times people get to a place where, um, you know, the fear of the change is less than what is the constant, people don't jump ship because, mm -hmm. As long as they know the constant is every day, right? Even though it's miserable. Mm -hmm. And I equate this to people that, you know, are in abusive relationships. Yeah. You know, I'm 
every day when he comes home, he's going to drink a six pack of beer. He's going to get upset. He might shake me. He might do whatever, but I, that's a constant versus, uh, I have to pack my bags. Uh, I'm going to have to get a job. How am I going to pay my own bills? Where am I going to live? He has control over the finances. So the fear of the unknown is worse than the, the danger of being in that situation. And when the fear of the unknown becomes less, that's when they're able to jump ship. How, do you, how does the fear of the unknown become less when, when all you're seeing and surrounded by is that abuse and, and that constant, you know, um, feeling of, of worthlessness? How does the fear of the unknown become less? I like how you put that. Well, I think for people, uh, it's a matter of finding out who they are and saying, you know what, this is just too much. Like the fear of the unknown, the, the monster on the other side becomes less fearful because of the constant over here on the other side. They finally get so fed up and are willing to take the chance, but it has to, it has to reach you know, a certain level before people will say, okay, enough's enough. Yeah. You know, because a lot of times, I mean, people do this at jobs every day, right? They don't like their job yet. They go and they pick up a paycheck and till it's bad enough that they say, you know what? I got to find something else Yeah. or they hired. They continue to do the same thing. And that's the definition of insanity, right? Doing the <laughs> same thing over and over. And and over. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like how you put that, the fear of the unknown, when it becomes less, you, you, you go so much, the human uh, body capacity can take so much, and it's like, you know, um, anything is better than this. <laughs> right. Anything is better right. than this. Um, I, you know, even if I have to sleep on the street, <laughs> it's better than this. Um, there's right. no way, you know, your mind is going to start going in a direction. Um, I must be, somebody must know me. Somebody must be able to give me food. You know, you start, you start going in a sort of solution, possibilities, right. what possibilities mode and anything is better than this because you, you start to see in the constant situation of the abuse, etc., that where you're ending up dead or <laughs> or um, in some sort of psychotic home or, or something. You commit suicide, which is the same as dead, or they kill you. It's either you kill yourself or they kill you, or you're in a, in a, in a psychotic home. Right. <laughs> and, and it's like the fear of the unknown looks better. Really, it does look right. better. Wow. Well, and the fact of you're either living or dying and most people are dying every single day oh my god they're really yeah. oh my god and why can't they recognize that they are dying why can't they recognize that they are dying i that is the most saddening thing to me yeah why can't they recognize that they are dying and and you mentioned identity we identify ourselves by all those things the job the mm -hmm. car, the house, the so-called friends that are really not your friends. You Anybody. know, the people that, yeah, the people that you associate with, the money that you can flash out in the cards, in the cash, in the travel, in the whatever. Why are you defining yourself? If you, if you are removed from all these things or these things are removed from you in a heartbeat, what would you do? Who would, right. you, who would you be? And a lot of people don't even know who they are without those things. Exactly. Exactly, which yeah. is so sad. You're lost. I, I saw something yesterday in my email. Not in my email. I came up on an ad. And, and the ad it was on YouTube. I was looking at something. And there's this, this challenge called 30days.com. And it really hit me. Um, you know, I was like, wow, this is really something. And what it is really is similar to what we're talking about. If you, if you lost everything, everything, all your money, all everything, and you had to start over, 
and you had 30 days, one month, to bring yourself back or to get yourself back on your feet, what would you do? Mm -hmm. What would you do from start to finish? Day one, day two, day three. That's a challenge that is actually on right now. And, you know, anybody listening, and you should probably check it too, 30days.com. What would you do? Interesting. Yeah. And, I, and the feeling that I'm getting from it is, 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 is a, such of a challenge and it's a reality as well. It can happen to you. It can Absolutely. happen to you. And this, this is, I think this is the, the, the emotional thought process as well that's going through me. And I sure would go to a lot of people who would probably take up on the challenge because they know it is possible. I can have all of this now and in a snap, it's gone. What would I do? Absolutely. I can be, and it doesn't have to be just money. I mean, it, everything is associated with money. You can have a spouse and they can die immediately. You don't know, an accident. That person may be the, the breadwinner and boom, it's gone. Nothing was put in place to say, you know, mm -hmm. money would be put over to you. You would have, you know, control of the funds. You can now carry on. No legal, nothing has been put in place. So it's like you, you have nothing. <laughs> you know, Pete, right. this, this is such a, 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 a serious, realistic, very possible situation. And, and for you, your wake up call, just like if everybody lose everything was, was life or death, you probably saw, whoa, I can die. What, yep. what does all this mean? I mean, seven, eight years of studying. I'm a lawyer. I'm a high powered attorney. Everybody knows me. I'm dealing with big cases. And what this thing called a brain tumor is, is doing what to me? T tell me what, what, what sort of went, go, went through your mind? You know, the, what, what went through you at that point when you discovered that you, as a matter of fact, go back a little bit. How did you, how did you decide to, to get tested? What, what were the symptoms, signs that was happening to you? Well, I had been sick um, for about three years mm -hmm. and I had been struggling uh, because I uh, only do homeopathic medicine. And so I had done Reiki and I had done acupuncture and cranial massage and we had worked on my diet and you know, nothing was getting better through those three years. And finally I said, I think I need to really go see, you know, a Western medicine doctor because I said, you know, we've done everything I feel like we can do at this point in time and we're not getting answers. And I'm very intuitive. And I kept saying, it feels like the circulation to my head is being cut off. Mm. And so I finally went to see um, a neurologist and you know, he did his normal testing and he said, I, it doesn't appear that there's anything wrong with you. And I said, okay, well, I'm not a hypochondriac. I said, I've been living in this body longer than you've been practicing medicine. There's something <laughs> matter. Um, and he said, well, I guess we can do an MRI, but I don't think it's going to show anything. And I said, okay, well, I left because he said, you know, I don't think it's going to show anything. So I left and I thought, well, okay, whatever. And progressively things got really intense in a very short amount of time. And finally I called him and I said, okay, you know, I think I need to do this, even though you think it's not going to show anything, but let's, let's do this. And so, um, I, uh, then started fighting with the insurance company because of course the insurance company didn't want to pay because they said I hadn't done enough. And I said, done enough. I said, what more do you want me to have done in the last three years? Mm -hmm. So they said, well, you go to physical therapy. And I said, well, you're going to send me to a physical therapist when you don't even know what's the matter with me. I said, I'm going to add you to the list of people I sue when you find out I have a brain tumor and you sent me to a physical therapist and I hung up. So I went through the process and we went to physical therapy a couple times. And finally I said, you know, you're not able to help me. You knew you weren't going to be able to help me when we started this process. Sign my paperwork so I can go have the MRI. So then we fought with them about whether or not they were going to do the dye in my body to mm -hmm. look for a tumor. 
And thankfully, I fought for that because had they not done the dye, they would have never found the tumor because the tumor didn't show up wow. on the regular uh, MRI. Mm -hmm. And so the tumor showed up on the dye contrast. And, um, you know, I left the MRI imaging center and we then had f a four alarm fire. And of course, the doctor was then alarmed and it was like his world stopped and you mine needed to stop as well. And I said, well, that's funny because, you know, about six weeks ago, you told me there wasn't anything the matter with me. Now we have a four alarm fire here. <laughs> so, yeah, I ended up uh, having brain surgery and um, it was a long, long recovery. It took me over a year to wow. finally get back to where I was prior to the brain surgery. Wow. Wow. Well, thank God for that. And it was not resting on anything that have you lost any sort of functions or? No. And actually, um, they were really surprised that I had survived as long as I had because the tumor had shoved my brain stem into my spinal cord. Whoa. And uh, every time that I would pass out, is when the cerebral fluid wasn't getting through. So in layman's terms, the circulation to my head was being cut off. Same thing, that, medical, same thing that you knew. <laughs> right. In medical terms, my brain stem was in my spinal cord and spinal fluid wasn't getting to my brain. Hence, it was short-circuiting and causing me to pass out. So I was seeing exactly what was going on in my body, yet it wasn't... In, um, medical terminology enough for I guess anyone to understand <laughs> <laughs> we know exactly what's going on in our bodies I mean as you said oh. you live in it you know you know something isn't right and no matter when somebody a doctor is telling you and you're telling them look I know something is up you know right. they just don't want to believe because hey who is the doctor here who is the one coming to see the doctor you know. Right, right. Right. Oh my goodness. So you have changed into going after something that that woke you up to, to pursue what you love and you, you merge your passions together. Horses, right. coaching, you know. Wow. I mean that that is serious. And now you're working with couples and, and individuals to help them to to live their passion, live their joy. Tell us a bit about yeah. that and what have you what have you experienced in working with these persons? Because you know, most of the times you think you're helping people and you are, but it, really the help is coming to you too. So Oh yeah, there's definitely borrowed benefit. Um and I have meetup groups where people can come and and experience the horses at a um, smaller level if you will we don't go as deep as I do in an hour and a half session however they get to experience a little bit of the process and what happens with the horses and have healing and um, it's it's amazing the stuff that happens and the borrowed benefit that people get just by being in the audience because no matter what's going on with an individual, more than likely you've experienced it or know somebody who has experienced it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you get to watch the healing process happen with that individual. And then the take the pieces that fit for you and carry that on with you in your life. Wow. When you say the healing process, I remember some years ago there was a movie that came out. I think it was a horse whisperer. Um, which is, you know, very similar or the same to like what you're doing. And you're like, how can horses really help you? I mean, really, you're supposed to go to a doctor, you know, the traditional way of looking at this. How, how can horses help you? Animals, and you know, because I know they're even using goats in yoga. They're, they're doing a, yeah, they're doing a number of different things. To, to connect mm -hmm. us back and I'm looking at it and saying look at how humans are realizing the importance of animals and that vibrational energetic connection with animals to us we feel that we're above and beyond because hey we have a brain and we can think but I have always believed that the animals are better off than us honestly they are better off and they're smarter than us and part of that is because they live in the moment uh, 
where us human beings are typically never in the moment. Never. Uh, we're such, yeah, we're such an instant gratification microwave society that, um, you know, the horses don't have that. So they don't hold on to anything. They don't have an agenda. They're not run by a clock or a cell phone or emails or a calendar, right? <laughs> like, I've just, never noticed that. But, I've never noticed it. <laughs> It, yeah, they just um, enjoy with what's going on in that given moment. The only thing they really care about is, are you going to feed me? However, they're not looking, like I said, at a clock or a watch and going, she was five minutes late yesterday. I wonder if she's going to be five minutes late today to feed us. And if she was five minutes late yesterday, I'm going to be mad today because she was five minutes late yesterday. No, they don't care, right? They just live in um, <laughs> You're to feed me, yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So why? What is the healing process with that? And why are we as humans? We're, we're making. I like where this conversation is going. Why are we caught up as human doings? Because we are not human beings. Why are we mm. <laughs> caught up in all of that monkey chatter? And, and, and the past and the future as opposed to being focused on the present and in the now. And the animals are just going along, doing their thing, and it's nothing. Well, I think part of it is the society and where, where you grow up and your environment, right? Like, I grew up in a family that both parents owned a business and, you know, we were very work and, um, work orientated and driven and so it was constantly driving to be bigger better faster more mm -hmm. and there wasn't a lot of downtime in my life uh it was always working to get something or to make the business better or you know something um i didn't play a lot of sports in high school uh i you know started working at a very young age in the family business and things of that nature. And I don't think as a society specifically in America, I mean, I, I think it's a little more relaxed probably where you are, at least when I go on vacation, it seems very relaxed. <laughs> um, where here, you know, it's the society is run by the almighty dollar, right? Mm -hmm. Like that becomes your status and what you're striving for in the car you drive and the house you live in and the job you have and, you know, all of that stuff. And so we don't, and I say this to people all the time, if your heart didn't beat and your lungs didn't like take in oxygen for you automatically, people would just, you'd see people falling over and dying because no one pays attention. They're on their phone, they're checking emails, they're sending emails, they're on Facebook, you know. All of that stuff pretty much 24 7 you can walk down the street or go to a restaurant and see people they're not even communicating anymore at dinner because exactly. people are on their cell phone. exactly and exactly. so I think we've just gotten so out of touch hmm. with human beings in and of themselves that that's where we are hmm. um, and it's not like when my grandparents were growing up and it you know was five miles to the nearest friend and you didn't have a phone line or if you did, you had to get on a party line and you never knew who was going to listen to that conversation. And, you know, um, you know, now you have people that live next door to each other and everybody's grinding it out mm -hmm. and the horses don't have that. They don't have an agenda. They, you know, can enjoy, you know, mother nature as well as they're connected to mother earth with four feet on the ground and they don't yeah. have shoes on yeah. um, where we as human beings are walking around in shoes and mm -hmm. are never really connected to the earth. I mean, you yeah. can look at studies with, you know, people who typically don't wear shoes and are, are walking around on the earth. Uh, even if you can just go out and walk around barefoot in your yard, 10, 15 minutes a day, yeah. you'll, you'll see a difference yeah. in grounding your body and, and grounding yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. grounding is important you you feel it you sense it i 
I need to do more of it. I walk around in the house. I mean, but it's not, it's not the same. I mean, bare feet is not the same as walking outside, like in the natural earth, you know, um, mm. like that. And I need to go to the beach more. Uh, a friend yeah. challenged me. I mean, I'm, I live on an island. Come on. So I need, to, I need to go to the beach more and just walk, you know, walk on the beach in the sun. And, and that is something I'm going to challenge myself to do, to do more of. It's amazing to live somewhere how you don't enjoy. You know, I live in Colorado where, you know, I can drive probably an hour and a half and be in the mountains and skiing. And we have so many beautiful things to do here. And I've lived here 13 years and I've probably skied three times in 13 years. <laughs> <laughs> wow i mean it, it just happens but we of course we we have people coming in from other countries coming in to enjoy that right oh my goodness right oh my goodness oh yes they're like the minute they find out where i'm from they're like oh my god you got the best snow blah 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 and i'm like oh we do great <laughs> It's the same thing with me in the Caribbean. Oh my God, you must go to the beach every day. There must be a beach right outside your window. I'm like, no. Right. <laughs> you know, right. um, but, but the healing from horses, tell me, share with me one experience you have had with working with your clients. So what, what was the issue that they came to you with without sharing all the details and how the using the horses has turned things around for them? What, what it is with these beings, these animals? that was able to, to turn things around? For, where is the change really happening? I guess that's what I'm trying to ask. Where is the change really happening? You're working with the horses. You have these human doings. I don't really want to call them human beings. Where, where does that transmutation, that, 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 that turn, that mind shift, where does it happen? Is it within the human? Is it something that that came from the horses? What what it is that happened? So the difference between what I do with horses and what they bring to the party, if you will, then what normal therapy is, is talk therapy doesn't really ever get to the root of the issue where the gestalt work gets to the root of the issue and we heal that so that you don't have to go back and continue to talk about it. Now that doesn't mean that there's not another piece or a part that we need to work on with regard to that issue because we're obviously, you know, different than we were yesterday. We're going to be different than we are tomorrow and we're an onion, right? Like when you heal and peel one back layer, peel back one layer of the onion, there's always another layer that can be worked on because you're a different person, right? Mm -hmm. However, um, the uh, horses, because they give instantaneous feedback, um, help the individual right away where they don't have to go out in the world and somewhat experience what they just mm -hmm. learned in talk therapy they have the answer right away because the horses give instantaneous feedback the horses feed off of energy mm -hmm. and so if you're speaking your truth the horse is going to be attracted to that and they will want to join up with you mm -hmm. if you are not speaking your truth then <laughs> the, you're being the, distracted you're being distracted who wants to talk yeah, who wants the, to talk okay. The dogs just came into the room where I'm at. <laughs> and you're giving them the eye, like I am on a video <laughs> recording. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's yes. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, so the, the horses are attracted to the energy. And so if um, you're not speaking your truth, the horses aren't going to join up with you and want to um, help with that situation because they know it's not your truth. However, if what you're saying is your truth, the horses are going to join up with that and help you through that process. So the client gets instantaneous feedback on whether what's coming out of their mouth is their truth. And now people all the time think, you know, that they're speaking their truth. However, when I point out what's going on with the horse, 
it's a clear indication that it's not your truth. So if I get into the round pen, just for an example, and say, I have on a blue shirt, which I don't know if you can tell, my shirt's not blue, it's, you know, a light pink. Yeah. Because everything has energy, the horse is going to know that that's not the truth. And I'm just using a dumbed down version, but it happens all the time. Like with couples, if I say, you know, how are things in your relationship or how are things with your marriage and their response is great. If it's not, that horse is like, mm -mm, I'm calling you out because that's not your truth. How does the right? horse respond? And so, how does the horse respond for you to know it's not the truth? It doesn't. The horse is not attracted to that because they know it's not the truth of the client. So what I'm saying is the horse is attracted to energy that is your truth. So if you're speaking your truth, the horse is going to want to come near you and oh. join up with you. Oh. But if it's not truth, the horse is not going to be attracted to that. And it'll be repelled by that and not want to join up with you in the round pen. Wow. So it's instantaneous feedback for the client. And when they can see um, what is going on with the horse, it, it's a great piece for them to go okay I got to dig deeper or what's going on or you know am I lying to myself and attempting to convince myself that my relationship with my husband's good you know all that stuff and then we work through that process and because the horse is you know energetically in tune with what is going on just by its being in and of itself the horse then works through that with the client and they're moved. And like I said, then we ultimately heal whatever it is, that piece of work we're doing through the gestalt work and the horse helps them through that. So here's an example. I had a client show up at one of my weekly meetup groups. She had lost her husband, you know, a couple weeks before that. Um, and it was very unexpected and she was pretty raw. And she wasn't for sure if she wanted to come to my meetup group, but she came that night. Mm -hmm. And it was a night that, um, you know, I had people scheduled and they just didn't show up. So she ended up being there by herself. Mm -hmm. And she kept saying, you know, maybe we should just cancel. And I was like, nope, you're here. I'm here. Let's, let's do some work. Mm -hmm. And so basically got a private session with me and the horses. And she says to me, you know, partway through the process, you know, do you always use the same horse week after week? And I said, no, as a matter of fact, I grabbed a different horse tonight just because I said I normally use justice. However, I don't know. I just had a feeling I should use a different horse tonight. Mm -hmm. she, she said, okay. And she, so we did some more work and she said, what's the horse's name again? And I said, this is Joy. And it was the first time she had actually heard it. Now I had said, I had introduced the horse and, you know, told her a little bit about the horse's background and all that stuff, but she didn't hear it at that point in time. And she said to me, you know, what's the horse's name? And I said, the horse's name is Joy. And she just started crying. And I said, what's coming up for you? Mm -hmm. And she said, I've been praying for Joy for the last two weeks. And I said, well, I said, unfortunately or fortunately, it doesn't always look like like we thought it was going to and <laughs> so she has four feet and tail and weighs about 1200 pounds but there <laughs> she is <laughs> um, so needless to say she then you know got in the round pen and did some more work and you know it was amazing why can't we have that sort of spiritual energetic vibrational connection with another human to be able to know when somebody is speaking their truth because we are spiritual beings but somehow and we, I, we, 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 we can lose we, we, we don't we, we some of us pick it up but we ignore that intuition you mentioned earlier that you're an intuitive person and we ignore we we make excuses we cover up we, the ego gets in and and starts to rationalize and you know why why can't we follow that as well as, I mean, you can look at young children. Um, you know, I remember uh, my mom telling me that my little brother had a friend for the longest time. And of course, my mom always poo-pooed it, right? Like he'd say, my friend is here. 
my mom was like, you don't have a friend. There's nobody here. Well, you know, children are very intuitive and connected to the other side. Mm -hmm. Um, because they don't have life that has gotten in their way. Adults that told them, you know, you're not able to see that. You're not able to connect to the other side, right? And, you know, children are able to do that. Some of them are better than others. However, as we get told, no, 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 you eventually shut that down, right? Like, okay, if I keep saying I have a friend here or I can see grandma and grandpa or, you know, something, right? And the adults in your life keep telling you, no, you don't, that exist. you don't have a friend, you finally go, okay, they're going to think I'm crazy mm-hmm. at some point if I keep my friends here, because mom keeps saying my friend's not here, right? Mm-hmm. And so we, you know, shut that off as well as we get going with life. And so you don't pay attention to the little things mm-hmm. and... Everybody, I think, has the ability to do it. It's whether you tune into it and tap into that and make that muscle stronger. And you have to work at it. You know, some days are easier for me to to pick up on stuff than others. And it's always easier for me to pick up on other people's stuff versus <laughs> my own. Yeah, I could relate like, to that. <laughs> yeah. I could relate to that. I could relate to that. We talk about the gestalt or gestalt, however they pronounce it. The wholeness. Touch on that a bit for me, this thing about wholeness, because I've had interviews with other persons and I'm firmly believed, I mean, I've, I've, I've come to the conclusion, you know, in the discussion and my own observation in terms of marriages and relationships, because that's, that's what we human beings, human doings are, you know, on the earth, in the physical form is about, you know, we are into relationships. It doesn't have to be a love relationship, it could be a friendship, work relationship, it could be anything, you know, neighbors, whatever it may be. And we are looking for someone to fill that void. We are not whole ourselves. You know, one whole being meeting another whole being in terms of a love, intimate relationship. And so when, when that person, that other person doesn't fulfill that expectation, because of course that void is, you know, because you, you have an expectation, you feel lost out. It's like you're you're not you're not filling that void for me. And so I need to find somebody to be in search of that who will give me that. And then there's never enough. And this is what to me people talk about going to therapy, going to counseling, or it's communication or because you can't manage your finances or no. It's because you are not whole and you are looking for this other person to fill that void or that gap or to make you happy, whatever it may be. We, we you know, yeah. that is that is really the issue. It's not communication. It's not any of the other things. It's because you went into this thing, this relationship, this commitment of marriage, whatever it may be, thinking that this person is going to fill this gap for you. You're expecting this person to do this for you. And it works both ways, male, female, female, mm-hmm. you know, whatever it may be, both sides. So tell us a bit about mm-hmm. that gestalt and wholeness um, in terms of relationships and in terms of after coming out of your, your, your situation with your brain tumor, leaving a high-powered situation, how have you two became whole as a result of what you're doing now? Well, to answer the last part, um, I firmly believe that you're not complete until you're put in the grave. You always have things to work on. Mm-hmm. And that's what I tell my husband. All the time. We do, we do couples work ourselves because I tell him, because his, his response is to me, why do we need to go see somebody? And I said, because I never want our relationship to be a four alarm fire where it's, if we don't do this, then we're going to get a divorce. I said, we always have stuff to work on. I said, is there anything in our marriage right now that is an issue that is like huge? No. However, I never want it to get to that place. Mm -hmm. And I'm constantly working on myself. I always have a coach. I'm always working on something. I'm always reading a book, something. Mm -hmm. Um, I love personal growth work. And like I said, no matter where you are, you're never the same person person the next day. So you always have something to work on. I'm a firm believer of that. As far as the gestalt work goes, it's 
the healing of the unfinished business. Mm -hmm. We all have trauma, whether you came from a leave it to beaver family or a drunk, alcoholic, abusive family, we all have trauma. Mm -hmm. Um, my father died when I was 17. I remember my teacher who told me I was no good at math. My first boyfriend told me I was fat and ugly and never going to get anybody better than him. I mean, we bring all of that to the party, right? And so I tell my, I said, if you do not heal the trauma from the past and most of it's childhood trauma, yeah. I said, if you do not heal that, I said, you're the common denominator. I said, you bring you to the next party. You're going to be in another lawyer's office three years, five years, seven years from now. I said, because you're going to be dealing with the same issues you're dealing with now in this relationship because you're going to attract somebody that's only taller, skinnier, shorter, fatter, blonde hair, brown hair, red hair. It doesn't make a difference because you are the person that's attracting them into your life. And so until you heal that, I said, you're, you're not going to create or attract anything different than what you have right now. And what I hope clients can get is whether they stay together or they leave, I don't have a dog in the fight. What I do have a dog in the fight about is that they are a whole person mm -hmm. and that they can realize that the person that they're sitting across from, that they once loved, that they fell in love with, is not chronologically a 25, 35, 45 year old person. They're a 10 year old who lost their parent, a 12 year old who's family got divorced, a 14 year old who was sexually molested. That's who they're dealing with. Yeah. They're not dealing with the adult that's sitting across from them. And if they can find the love and speak to them, like they would speak to that 10, 12, 14 year old child, there's a lot of healing in that and they can let it go. And what I tell people all the time is if there is emotional unfinished business in your relationship, that's why you're still fighting. That's why you're arguing about the teapot set from the day you got married. That's why you need to have lawyers involved because if there was no emotional dog in the fight, you'd be thinking about your children and what's in their best interest mm -hmm. and not mad because he's sleeping with his secretary or mm -hmm. mad because, you know, she's run off and she's a shopaholic, whatever the issue is. I mean, that's the surface level issue. There's really an underlying issue that needs to be healed. And so if we can get them to that place and heal that, it's going to be completely different. And you are absolutely correct. Most people do not come into a relationship whole. Mm -hmm. You hear it all the time in wedding vows. I found my other half. Oh no, my you didn't. God. Oh my God. Yeah. You, if you did find your other half, you're in trouble because this is not going to last. <laughs> and, you know, it seems more of a girl thing mm -hmm. than maybe a guy thing. But, you know, girls, you know, are constantly looking for that, you know, like I said, other half. And I'm like, no, you know, I was raised by a very independent woman. I didn't get married till I was 45 or excuse me. I was 44 when I got married for the very first time. Mm -hmm. um, and I waited a long time. I did a lot of work on myself yeah. just because. Um, you know, I was looking for somebody that I could be a partner with, yeah. not somebody going to completely complete me, you know? And that was a big thing, you know, in, uh, what was the name of the movie with Jerry Maguire or yeah, Jerry Maguire was the name of the movie with, yeah. um, uh, uh, Tom, uh, Cruz and Renee yeah. Zellweger, you, know? you complete me. And that was, you know, like the thing, right. You complete me. And it's like, no, no one completes you. Yeah. You are whole. If you're looking for somebody to complete you, you're going to have problems. Yeah. 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 And we lose contact, right? Like in the beginning when we date, you know, you go to dinner and you're staring in each other's eyes and <laughs> you really care what the person's saying and you're listening, right? Mm -hmm. And after moon phase is over about six months into it. People are like, what do you want for dinner? As they're running in the house, um, they're checking email, they're talking on their cell phone, they're doing whatever, right? They've lost contact with each other. Mm -hmm. And so I think those are the two biggest things that I see in relationships is just getting people back in contact with each other, sitting knee to knee and connecting eye to eye and feeling the other person without, you know, touching them 
energetically feel them. Yeah. Wow. Major, major things, major things. That is, that is the issue in the world. People are just not whole and there are a lot of, <laughs> a lot of unhealed wounds and, and it's because of fear. It's because of fear. It's hard to face those unhealed wounds, Andrea. Oh, absolutely. It's absolutely. trauma, like you say, from childhood. And some of us don't even remember, you know, mm-hmm. you don't even remember and you may get flashes of it or you just feel anxious, uh, vexation. You, you have a welling up of emotion, but you don't understand why. And, you know, it's, it's, you, a lot of us don't question why are we feeling this way? Where is it coming from? Why, you know? Mm-hmm. This is what we yeah. need to do. This is what we need to do. Question it. Why am I feeling this way? And it, it may happen several times throughout the day. You may go from one to the next, one to the next. And you're like, why? You know, I started off wonderful this morning. What is happening? <laughs> you know, yeah. what is happening? Wholeness. Yeah. My goodness. I want to go to your website, Andrea, so I can showcase what you're up to remind me of your website again it's www.withers w-i-t-h-e-r-s whisper.com withers whisper.com mm-hmm. yes oh and of course there's an image of horses oh, yeah. there we go hold on <laughs> Let me share the screen here. Here we go. So where did your passion go? It ran off with the horses. Okay. <laughs> it's time for your wake up call. Do you sometimes look around your life and wonder what happened to your happiness? People are searching for it outside, Andrea. What do you yeah. mean? It went, it went with, with the man. It went with the job. It went with the car. <laughs> Oh. You know, and this is why we're on the hamster wheel. We're constantly running, yeah? Yeah. Constantly running. I love the horses. It's amazing. You know, the other day I went, I was out dancing because I do Latin dancing and I met this woman. And she, she came and joined us at the table. And she she actually is um, equestrian mm-hmm. and she trains. Um, I, ha- I took her number immediately. And it's so funny that I end up talking to you who's also into horses there is a sign here there is a sign you know so I took her number um and she showed me such a beautiful picture of her horse I can't remember the name of it it looked just like out of a magazine mm-hmm. <laughs> white stallion you know it's, oh my god beautiful 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 white stallion they're such beautiful creatures so yes. tell me, what is, what is here happening on your site? I think you had mentioned that you have something to give away or persons can put in their name and email so that they can get stuff from you. Yeah, so I have free daily inspirational whispers that go out. They can register for those on my email. However, right now they can sign up um, on my website or email me mm-hmm. for a 30-minute free exploratory session. Where can I'm, you do that? Uh, if you scroll down um just a little, little, yep mm-hmm. uh, right there. yep if you click right there you can sign up for um a free exploratory session with me it's 30 minutes and we will discuss i'm you know getting ready to do a a 90 day coaching package and um if they do, uh um schedule that I can go over all that with them in that free exploratory 30 minute session. Oh, beautiful. Let me click on it and so that they can see where it takes them. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking for a few good coaching clients right now. So okay. now's a good and we can get 90 days in before the end of the year and they can still get their goals. Yeah, yeah. You still have time. The last quarter of the year. Yeah. Yes, the last quarter. Yeah, try and end, end off with a bang. <laughs> and the Prayer Pony Foundation. Nice. What is that about? Um, I partner with a nonprofit organization. You can purchase. They're called Prayer Ponies and they come in two different sizes. Mm-hmm. And I have my own line 
at the Prayer Pony Foundation. And um, we do something at Christmas time with the inmates at the local prisons here. They get to put their stories on there and people buy ponies and they get sent to the inmates, family or friends or relatives, whoever they're looking for a prayer pony to go to. And uh, part of the proceeds go towards scholarships for people to participate in one-on-one -on -one sessions with me or my uh, events and retreats. Nice. Who is this and who is this next to you? Um, those are two of my girlfriend's horses. Uh, at the time that I did uh, the photo shoot, I, I did not have my own horses. Uh, and so I used two of her horses. Beautiful. It's a beautiful picture. Thank you. Yes, such big creatures. It's kind of scary standing next to them. And I, I, I've always been told, yes, I've always been told not to stand behind. That's right. <laughs> Yes, I have to be careful with horses, not to stand behind. I've, I've been on a horse, probably not as big as that one, you know, the little ones that they allow you to ride on. So I've had a little experience, but I've always wanted to ride horses. So clearly I need to meet with you. This is a beautiful photo. I love this. Their eyes are so telling. Yes. Their eyes are so telling. I can just, you know, just looking at it, I can, I can see deep inside of that horse. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh my goodness, Andrea, this has been a wonderful conversation. And yes. It has been so a much for having the show today. Yeah, it's not a problem at all. It's about horses. It's not about you. It's not about you. <laughs> it's no, about I, 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 I'm an honored to have been able to speak with you today, and I really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing your experience, and I'm so happy that, you know, you're well. You're well and you're healthy and you're alive today to be able to share that yes. with us and to help other people in the process. Thank you so much. Yes, thanks for having me. You have a great rest of your day. You too, my dear. And say hi to Joy and just okay. to me. <laughs> I will. Thank you so very much.